so good morning. Uh, again, my name is Jesse Martinez, and with Susan, uh, we helped facilitate just a sysadmin think tank um, throughout the whole week. Um, and I think we had a lot of good feedback. Um, we, our conversation starting on Monday uh, really sparked a lot of issues that we've been having just as sysadmins and users in general of all these fabrics um, and paths forward that we wanted to, attack, to tackle um, as far as um, how can we contribute back to the developers and um, people who actually build this, um, these fabrics as to how we can actually um, help manage these fabrics um, from our point of view um, as they start becoming more developed and kind of splitting off in their own ways as well too. Um, uh, so again, uh, this think tank was uh, sparked from that idea that we have um, many different uh, diverse fabrics now that are being evolved. Um, they all formed from InfiniBand. We have OmniPath now growing and kind of splitting off to what InfiniBand is um, and some other new types of technology that are starting to, to birth now. Um, and so how can we actually integrate these fabrics um, from our standpoint and uh, work with them, diagnose them um, in our everyday lives? And so most of us as sysadmins have many different fabrics to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, usually a few dozen, and there's usually not that many people that can be managing them 24-7. Um, and so what kind of tools and, and, and documentation can we have to help us actually um, help our, our make our lives a little bit easier just because there is so much that's going on? Um, and then with that, what are some ways that we can try to standardize what these aspects are? Um, I mean, the fabrics themselves are fundamentally um, the same as far as a concept, um, but there's many ways to administer them. There's many ways to, to look at them and to figure out what's going on exactly. Is there ways that we can actually try to come back to the roots and say, well, this is the fundamental problem. What kind of tools and documentation can we create to actually pinpoint what the exact issue is so we can go forward and figure out what it is? Um, and then in the long run, I mean, we have all these different fabrics now. How can we make them work together? And so it's not as simple as just having one fabric doing one thing by itself. As you saw uh, the presentations today, we have many different fabrics, many of them that need to interop together um, based on either gateway nodes or some sort of sand fabric and how they interop together. Um, but there's complications in doing that. There's um, a lot of tools and a lot of software packages out there that need to be developed for both of these fabrics now. And sometimes they overlap, sometimes they differ. This makes it a little bit difficult to actually get them working quite well together um, and for some of these use cases that we have. And so we set up to try to actually figure out what these drivers are for um, these main issues that we're having. Um, identifying what these key factors are that makes our life just a little bit harder, um, just from our standpoint and what are certain ways that we can try to develop and give back to the community to say, this is the kind of struggles that we're having now that we have these multiple fabrics, these overlapping tools, things like that. How can we make them a little bit more simpler um, and standardize what those um, look like to make our lives easier? Um, how to make them more interop together um, now that we are kind of have all these different distro packages for the OFS, how can we try to make them more, a little bit more standardized to make them work together as we're deploying them um, and make it easier for us? And then again, finally, we have these, these new, new admins, these new people who are being introduced into this technology. There's a lot of, lots of different documentation out there in the world, but there's no real centralized um, place where you can actually use and get the community involvement to actually try to get that, uh, the word spread out on how to use it, how it works, how to diagnostic, things like that. We have our own tools that we develop ourselves, um, but there's a lot of things that we could be working and collaborating on together to try to make it easier for ourselves. And that's kind of what we focused on. Um, so the first, the first thing we focus on is just these diverse fabrics that are in today's world. Um, again, they all came um, from the, the OFA community through InfiniBand, and now we have these different fabrics um, like OPA developing from it. Um, but now that we're running into issues where they are so similar, but they're also quite different. And how do we actually try to manage those um, separately? Um, most of us manage these fabrics um, uh, on the same team. Usually you don't have split teams that try to manage all this. Especially at Lano, we, we manage all the different fabrics, Ethernet, IB, OPA, things like that, where we're trying to do all these uh, things at once. It makes it a little bit um, harder for us to try to keep consistent data, um, consistent monitoring for all these different types of fabrics. And so what can we give back to the, to the developers and say, well, let's, let's take a step back. I mean, we, we came from the same um, stack originally. We were trying to make that consistent, and that was kind of one of the goals of the OFA originally, was to try to keep that distro, or to, to keep that stack um, in a way that can be conformed for everybody's use of it. Uh, but since then, we have different tools and different module files, kernel um, uh, plugins, things like that, that started to diverge. 
um, but at the same time are being overused for many different things. And so it just makes it a little bit difficult for us to understand the underlying technology, how it works, and how it's supposed to interrupt together with um, the different fabrics on the same system. One of those being like IP over IB, uh, which is made used by both IB and OPA, things like that, and has overused terms uh, for the most part. And so how can we redefine those to be more gen general for these high-speed fabrics that are being developed now? Now going forward with these new technologies that are being developed and thought of, um, how can we do that? Or should they be kept this, um, separate? Um, again, that's kind of the, the goal that we're trying to, to accomplish here is, uh, what is the best way to approach this? Is it easier just to keep everything separate and we just stick with trying to learn multiple things? Or is it just something that can we give feedback to try to merge them back together? Um, again, different tools for different fabrics. So you have different IV commands, different RPA can commands that basically do gather the same type of information, even though it may not be consistent. Um, but the underlying source of it is roughly the same. And so is there ways that we can try to, to bring that back together and to make it a little bit easier for us to understand um, like, or again, keep separate, we don't know. And then again, of course, that we've been talking about all week is um, just the different flavors of the stack that we have now with the different distros. Um, OFA itself in, in general is that there's many different flavors of it. Under the, the core concept is still the same, um, but enough differences for each distro now that there's, makes it a little bit harder to understand how each distro works with the software stack and how we use it um, for that particular use case. And so one of our main focuses to try to resolve this is just the idea of standardization. Um, it was brought up in the think tank that the standardization word is a very scary term to use in this community. There was, we weren't quite sure why we were so afraid of trying to make that word um, or the standardization process itself um, come to life. Um, but from our, our use case, it, it's, it's definitely easier for our lives to try to make things more consistent. Um, and I know that the fabrics have been splitting and diverging off and doing their own thing from the different vendors and all that. Um, but just, again, from our lives, it just makes it a little bit more complicated to try to um, deal with that um, just because there are so many different tools, different kernel modules that we have to figure out now. Although essentially they, they do the exact same thing. Um, and so with that, can the OFA be a driving force to help figure out how to make that standard, standardization possible? Um, again, we've been talking um, from the town meeting this past week and a few other get-togethers that, I mean, the whole purpose of the OFA was to try to keep that, that mission alive and kind of keep this software stack consistent across the different uh, distros and hardware, et cetera. Um, is there a way that the OFA can try to re-merge that back together and try to think of ways that we can keep the underlying technology um, in the vendor support and let, let them do their own thing, um, but from the user level, are there ways and tools that we can actually bring that back to make it more consistent with what they're exactly they're doing from that point of view? Um, and so another big key part of that is just the, the use of documentation and transferring our knowledge between all of these different sysadmins who are working together to try to solve the same problem, just make the network work for the, the users. That's always the big complaint is the network's down and we need to fix it. Um, and so we started coming up with a few possible ways that we can do that. Um, again, the use of just documentation in general is pretty widespread. There's a lot of good documentation out there, but it's usually vendor specific. Um, it's co-located with the vendor sites themselves. And so there's a lot of different places you can go to get that information. Sometimes it may um, be, be different, again, based on the technology, but the underlying tools are there. It's just a matter of trying to go and find it. And so we were trying to figure out the best way to try to merge that back together. Um, and a few years back um, with Susan's support, I mean, the, the user uh, community started uh, to, to get together to try to find ways to do that a few years back. And so the OFA had their own wiki page created on their main website that the users could come and keep their documentation there. Um, but as we looked at it throughout the week, um, it's hardly been touched since like 2014, 2015. There's been a few good uh, con contributions um, from the users at that time, but not much since then. And if you actually look at the, the page hits on that, that site, there are thousands and thousands of hits on that website of, uh, we assume, admins trying to find resources and documentation on how to solve these problems and set up these fabrics. Um, but there's not much content there. Or if it is there, it, it's pretty old. It's a few years old. And so our, our thought was, um, I mean, we have this tool. Yes, it was very underutilized um, and kind of left uh, to sit there the past few years. But I mean, we're, we're trying to revamp this community again, the sysadmin community, and what are ways that we can try to do that. And one of them is just try to keep that uh, wiki page more up to date. And so we sent out that link. And I'm, again, I'm encouraging all the sysadmins out there and developers too, if you want to give contribution um, and different documentation and ways that you diagnose fabrics, the different tools that you use, how you use those tools, things like that, um, that could greatly help the, the community itself. 
Um, and then with that, there was also the user forum that came out of the, those discussions a few years back. Um, I'm on that list, and it, it, it is uh, pretty utilized by the community out there, um, but may not be well known enough for, to get more people involved. And so that's linked on the main um, OFA website as well, too, for people to subscribe to that email list and um, give thoughts and feedback on issues that they're having as well, too. So we're encouraging uh, more people out there to try to use that tool. Um, it is a good resource to get uh, involved with the rest of the community um, and get that knowledge transferred around. Um, along those same lines, I mean, so we were trying to come up with other ways that we can get more knowledge um, across um, the community. Um, the idea of training came up. There's, um, on the OFA site itself, there's um, training for how to, to program with the, the software stack itself, uh, but not much training on, as to how to set it up and get things running and things like that. There are some vendor-specific ways um, that you can do that, that the vendors have um, themselves. Uh, but fundamentally, um, what, what's the best way that you can set up your fabric to be optimized and then the best way to maintain it, things like that. And so we thought, could the OFA help contribute to some sort of training to do that as well too? Um, again, based on this wiki page that we can develop, there are ways that we can try to um, standardize that, um, create templates and uh, ways to um, better moderate that um, in the long run. But there are things that we can come up with to try to create our own training, at least um, best practices for how to set up your fabric, and kind of put that on the OFA website to have people download that and use that as well too. And again, like we said, we don't know, we can make that an official training uh, uh, deck, um, or we just rely on just word of mouth and have people come to, to take that, um, that, those lessons from that wiki page. Um, but along with that, the technology is changing so rapidly that if we do try to develop an official training course, I mean, the technology is changing so often and so quickly that that training becomes obsolete within at least a year for sure. And so there's no real way to keep that consistent unless we try to do it in a, in a reasonable um, a way that we can have people come and retake that training on an easier day-to-day uh, -day or uh, a more frequent um, course. Uh, but it would need to be done correctly. Um, at the same time, certifications have come up in the discussions as to can we make people certified in these fabric deployments or fabric administration. Um, but again, it would have to be done correctly to make sure it's credible um, to get the word out that these people are certified in deploying these fabrics and managing them. But um, again, it's changing so rapidly that that could um, easily become obsolete again. So. Um, and then in the long run, is, is just the collaborations with the people who are developing you guys. Um, this technology and how do we interface with you to get um, the best um, ways to implement these fabrics that you have built for the community to use. Um, again, the vendors have their specific details on how to do that, um, but usually it's coming from the industry, the higher ups themselves that we try to give the, the community the information that they need, but usually the one on one that we really care about is usually at this conference or from your word of mouth um, colleagues that you have at your work. And so is there a way that the OFA um, can help bridge that gap more often with the sysadmins in the world with the developers. And we think the workshop was a, the best way to do that, to start off. Um, and usually we get a lot of good feedback here this week, but then we go back to our daily lives and that's kind of all drift off until next year. So what can we do um, on a year-to-year -year, um, basis instead of just at the conference to actually try to get that interaction more involved? And so our path forward. Um, Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's our path forward is that, that let's keep this ongoing communication um, going forward, especially with this mailing list that we have now for the Sting Tank. We want to keep that live and active so we can be communicating on that. But along with that, let's discuss ideas of how we can keep that going throughout the year. And we talked about monthly uh, get togethers, either uh, con calls, um, meet, uh, in person meets, things like that. Um, to share ideas, to talk about issues that we've been having and kind of share that resource within each other. And so yes, any involvement from the OFA would be greatly helped to do that. Um, and any kind of effort to make that more standardized as well to have uh, maybe bi-yearly get-togethers to have equipment set up that we can play around with and test things out and test new software ourselves and see what kind of issues that we're having, things like that. Many ideas can come from that. And so th those are a few of our path forwards that we came up with. Uh, more involvement with the OFA workshop itself um, as we've been talking about, especially last night, uh, for a few years we did try to keep um, the developers conference and the user conference separate, um, just so we can have those different tracks. Um, but there is benefit of everything combined together because we can get good feedback from the developers. 
things like that. And so that was kind of discussed last night um, at the OFA meeting itself. And so we're, we're hoping that we can pursue that more and try to come up with a good path to actually get the integration a little bit better. Um, and either develop tracks or just some way to format the workshop a little bit um, easier so we can get that kind of feedback and balance across everybody. And then so finally we were presenting this links out the links that are important for us. Again, the OFA um, community page, which is off the main website, um, has links for the, the forum discussions that you can subscribe to. Um, it has a link to the OFA wiki page as well too. And then finally our the, the mailing list that we created uh, for the think tank this week. And so we wanted to make sure that got um, out and passed with word of mouth um, to your colleagues and things like that to try to develop this sysadmin community a little bit better um, so we can stay more involved and all that. Um, but primarily we want to hear back from you as far as how do we, are, are these ideas good to contribute to um, how us sysadmins want to kind of be integrated into the OFA community, things like that. And so I welcome any feedback that we can get. So I got a question for you. The purpose behind um, the think tanks was to form a community, which you did. Mm -hmm. and one of the things you were asked to do was to describe a path forward and a process. We weren't looking for solutions today. We were looking for, this is great. What you did is great. My question for you, should we form a system administration work group? Yes, and I think that's what we were aiming at. Okay. We, were, we were gonna develop it ourselves with the help from the OFA, but the OFA is a bigger community that we can leverage from, and I think that would be a, a huge benefit. Yeah, I'd like to see you take advantage of the structure of the, yes. open, of the alliance to. You know, it's, it's a perfect model for creating, uh, you know, a work group that gives a community enough form and structure such that it, it thrives and, and can attack some of these questions you raised. Yes. That would be a great place to take up the question of, you know, do you want to do training? If you could develop that idea inside the work group and bring it forward to the board as a proposal that says, you know, we'd like to, to develop this training. It would be a great place to do that. So. Let's talk about creating that working group and get it launched. Yeah, and another key aspect that I kind of overlooked through this as well too, and we had some conversations um, this morning as well too, is that I mean, we have, um, as sysadmins, a lot of requirements that we have for how we manage our fabrics um, and how we think the best way to do that. Um, if we develop a list of requirements as to how we want to manage our fabrics um, and utilize them, is there something that we can give back to the developers and say, this is how we would like to manage the fabrics, how we want to integrate them into our monitoring infrastructure, things like that. What can we give to the developers to try to standardize that, um, develop their tools in a way that can provide feedback into that framework that we try to develop? Um, and that was another key aspect that we thought would be a nice way to standardize things. Um, but again, that would have to be developed through this new sysadmin community. Um, first interact and develop that requirement list first. And so that would be an ongoing task that we would need to, to create. Fantastic. Yeah. I was kind of monitoring the mailing list during the week to see what was going on and kind of watching over my shoulder at meet the experts and so on. How many people in the room participated in this particular think tank? I want to thank you all for doing that. You know, I think putting yourselves out there and becoming part of a community like this is the way that we're going to advance and solve problems yes. like the ones that motivated this think tank in the first place. So my personal thanks to all of you, and I hope you will remain engaged. As Jesse said, we will keep the mailing list active, and that will be the formation, sort of the nucleus, if you will, of this community going forward, and we can form a working group and make that happen. So thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Great job. All right, sec second one is one close to near and dear to my heart, which is um, remote persistent memory. So I've hornswoggled Doug into presenting the um, results from that. Divya, do we have slides for that? <laughs> 